something a little different for today's video, and that is this. A docking station for my beloved MacBook Air. Hello and welcome back, or if you're new here, then just hi. So, if you're like me and extremely sexy, I'm not. That's a lie. You'll use a laptop regularly, and you may be frustrated, again, also like me, with the lack of ports on most modern laptops. In steps this, a docking station, the LK10 to be exact, not to be confused with similar looker items, which are in fact not docking stations, but port replicators. Anywho, GG Mundo. Hello darkness, my old friend sent me this, and whilst this is not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form, they were kind enough to send it to me for free. So thank you for supporting small creators such as me. GG, as they will henceforth be known, offer both a Mac and Windows variant, and this one being for Apple Mac. I'll be using this on my M2 MacBook Air, and I'm very intrigued to see if the multi-monitor option actually works, because Apple states, <coughs> the M2 MacBook Air can drive at most one external display. I also said yes to looking at this because my MacBook Air only has two type C ports, one of which is always used by my SSD as I was too cheap to pay the unbelievably extortionate rate for extra storage from Apple. Anyway, let's start by seeing what we get in that box. In the box we have the main unit itself which measures 6.14 by 2.22 by 0.71 inches and weighs a measly 5.6 ounces. Underneath this we have some gumpf, also known as a user manual, and then guess what? That's it. Unboxing done. Now at time of filming this video, this will set you back 148.99 great no 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 148.99 USD US dollars, which is currently around 116 Great British pounds. And as always, you'll find a link in the video description down below. Thanks. So what connectivity options do you get with this specific model? Well, you'll get two HDMI ports and two display ports, which will allow you to run two external monitors at 4K 60 Hertz. You'll get one gigabit LAN port for networking and three USB 3.2 ports. You also have one 3.5 millimeter audio jack and one USB type C which is also a power delivery port 100 watts which will allow you to then charge via it as well. It connects to your device either with type A or removing the adapter will expose a type C connection which supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 and has up to a 10 gigabit per second transfer speed. As I mentioned, this is the Mac version which supports the M1, M2 and M3 MacBook Pro or Air variants, but does not support iPad OS. So right, I'm gonna now go get this set up on my Mac, but PC users, don't fret. Don't let that put you off. We are one. Apparently the setup is equally as simple, or so I'm told. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is head over to the Synaptics website on your screen now and grab the latest installation file. You'll also find a link down below. It's a very small file at just over seven megs, so it will download nice and quickly. Before you run the installer, however, check that you are allowing App Store and identified developers, which will be found in your privacy and security settings. As they warn, if this process isn't followed, you may need to reinstall your Apple operating system. Wow. That's a bit harsh. Next, head over to your downloads folder and double click the file you've just downloaded in order to start the installer. Follow the on-screen steps and with the installer complete, you can then plug in the dock and then accept the accessory warning from Apple. And then basically, you're done. You can just start connecting those peripherals. So as you've just seen, setting this up is super simple. And I also did it on a Windows Dell device, so I can confirm equally as easy. When you've completed the setup, however, nearly took my out then, be sure to check the display link software and make sure that the option to start it on login is checked, as you'll need to have that software running in order to be able to use external monitors. The dual monitor aspect works well on my Mac despite Apple's attempts not to allow it. It does so as the uh, display link software that you install creates the monitors virtually, which is a, a way around the hardware multi-screen limitation. But in doing so, the output goes via the dock and therefore does not utilize your device's graphics card. So if you're into gaming or high-end design for work, for example, this may not be the right option for you. Sadly, it's not a Thunderbolt dock, so it does have a 10 gigabit per second limit.
limit. Again, for high-end users, this may not be enough because it will certainly affect the transfer speeds if you have an external disk attached to it, for example. But for me, that's not my use case. Getting dual displays and an ethernet port on my Mac is. It's very lightweight to other docking station solutions, so fits nicely into a bag and it isn't too unsightly until you have to start connecting all of the peripherals it is. Unfortunately, no way around that. Apart from it needing the addition of an SD card reader, in my opinion, which would make this the perfect solution for me, it's still a very good solution to add dual screens and extra ports to any computer, in my humble opinion, that is. But would I spend my own money on it? Well, it is expensive at over a hundred pounds, but still a very affordable solution when compared to other docks specifically for Apple. So yes, I have no reason why I wouldn't buy this device to give me access to dual screens and extra ports when working away from home. However, could I recommend it to you guys? That I'm not sure on. I really don't like the idea of a user needing to reinstall their entire Apple operating system because they forgot to change the developer setting beforehand, that certainly needs addressing in my opinion. I tend to know what I'm doing, so this doesn't cause me an issue, but for an everyday user, this could potentially cause some serious problems. So with this in mind, you need to decide whether it's right for you. Thanks again to uh, Gigi for sending me this. And if you have any questions about it or anything else for that matter, then please do let me know in the comments box down below. And uh, whilst you're down there, that's what she said. Please do consider liking the video, even if you didn't. Subscribing if you aren't already and hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos because it's very important. It helps me get sent more free stuff like this to play with and, and make videos about. So yeah, thank you and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye, internet. Put a on me like they all hate on me.